All right, so um, I do want to let Justin know. Justin and I upload some videos today, and I did hit 5,000. So I am halfway through my goal. My goal is to get 10,000. All right. So this isn't the 5,000th video anymore, but it is a video I want to go over for you guys real quick before you get to lunch. So I got about five minutes. The main important thing, ladies and gentlemen, is they're asking us to evaluate for the cosine of the difference of two angles. Again, we look at these two angles, and these angles do not intersect the unit circle right at a point. So we cannot use the fact of the x and the y coordinates for these angles. So we have to create a triangle. And it says your angles, um, u and v, are in quadrant 2. right? So we need to make sure we can graph or sh plot what these triangles are going to look like in quadrant 2. First of all, let me do this first. So, Again, when going over problems, when we have to create a triangle, and one of the big things about when a, the hard things, when a problem, when, a, when an angle does not, is not producing a point on the unit circle, we have to create the triangle. One of the hard things is what does the triangle look like? Remember, your triangle is always going to be perpendicular to your x-axis. Okay? That's going to be, the perpendicular means that's going to create your right triangle. right? Because we can't use our Pythagorean um, uh, we can't use our trigonometric ratios without it being a right triangle. So now I have a right triangle. And then we also always have to create what we call our central angle, which in this case will be u, and in this case will be v. All right? And notice how both those triangles are created in the second quadrant. Right? And that's going to become very important. Because for here, they say the sine is 5 over 13. So remember, sine opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Right? So now, Chris, the next thing we need to look at is to find out the remaining sides. I need to find this adjacent side and this opposite side. So normally what you could do is use Pythagorean theorem. But hopefully you guys from geometry class remember some Pythagorean triples that you should know that this is already going to be 12 and that's going to be 4. If you don't believe me, go ahead and apply the Pythagorean theorem and you'll see those answers. But what's important about the, about the triangles being in the second quadrant is that this is not going to be positive 12, but this has to be negative 12. Right, Caroline? Because when you do the Pythagorean theorem, remember you introduce the square root. You do plus or minus when you solve for that um, side length. So therefore, you have to determine, are you going to use the positive or the negative value? Well, for adjacent, I'm going to have to use the negative value. But for the opposite side, I have to use the positive value. Okay. So now we go and look at this. We say, all right, so what is the difference formula for us to be able to apply? So the cosine, the difference of two angles would be cosine of u times cosine of v plus the sine of u times the sine of v. Right? Those are the formulas you guys will be provided. I'm going to already have copies of all the formulas for you to give to you. OK? So there you go. Now we just need to apply it. Look at the cosine of u. Here's the big mistake students will do. The cosine, remember, is adjacent over hypotenuse. So they say cosine of negative 12 over 13. No, no, no. The cosine of your angle u is just negative 12 over 13. The cosine of v is negative 3 over 5. Plus the sine of u, which is 5 over 13, times the sine of v, which is 4 over 5. Okay, now you just multiply across. Negative 12 times 3 is positive 36. 13 times 5 is 65. Plus 5 times 4 is 20 over 65. Common denominators, combine them. 56 over 65. Done. Any questions? Yes? Because it's negative 12. Because it's adjacent side. So it's in the second quadrant. So your x, that side has to be negative. Yes? If it's in the second quadrant, if I, said the ang if I said the triangle's in the third quadrant, then it looks something like this. Right? If I said it's in the first quadrant, fourth quadrant. Does that answer? Yeah. And that's it. 